All right, what's up, guys? So uh, a lot of people have been asking me about how to do these windshields. Um, I'm finally just going to you know, put it out there. I don't really care anymore. There's not enough money in it for the time and stress involved. <laughs> so uh, over the past, like, four or five years, I've, I've dumped, like, 15 to 20 grand into figuring out this process. So saving you guys a lot of money. Uh and headaches <laughs> but anyways uh, let's get started um, there's gonna be links of all the exact products or almost exact uh, for the things that are not exact it doesn't matter really what you use but for the things that do matter they will be exact um, so all in the description down below there's links but anyways so we're getting started um, Mike's working <laughs> all right. uh, we're gonna start with one of them. We're gonna take the rear view mirror buttons off of them. We're gonna use heat, so a torch. And we're gonna take the vice grips uh, and we're going to take the jaws of the vice grips and bring them all the way down to where they're almost touching the glass. Almost, like a sixteenth off of the glass and that the vice grips are parallel with the glass. Not like this, not like straight up. And you're gonna apply heat to the top and bottom um, gently and take your time uh, because if you heat that glass up too quick you're gonna bubble the laminate in between the glass and that's not good and you're gonna gently wiggle those vice grips don't use too much force and make sure your force is parallel with the glass if you pull up at all you risk chunk chunking out the glass and you're gonna do this for both of them so take your time top and bottom top and bottom top and bottom rinse and repeat wiggle it off and then once it's off, you're gonna, you saw me razor, you're gonna razor the remainder of that epoxy off and you're gonna clean it up. Uh, we're doing this for both glasses because we're later gonna test which one goes on the front, which one goes on the back. And you can only do that by making sure that they are pressed all the way against each other. Uh, and, and you can't do that with the buttons there, they get in the way. Uh, also wait to take the stickers off as late as possible. Um, problem I ran into before, uh, you know, picked glass up, got home, checked them out. They had a ding in them, um, which would normally be covered. I could swap them out for free, uh, but they need to have the stickers on them to be eligible for the swap out, at least for my supplier. I don't know how your supplier works. Um, yeah, keep the stickers on as long as possible. And after you've looked over them, Look at all the edges everywhere. Make look at the face. Um, make sure that uh, there's no scratches. <clears throat> Doing both windshields. Take the stickers off. Uh, we're gonna clean them up using I think this is isopropyl used here, 99% alcohol. Uh, front and back for both. I think we're gonna fit them up. Yep. And what we're gonna do here is we're putting both of them on and putting them all the way together and we're going to see we're going to look for any rainbow patterns in like the middle of the glass any areas that have like a rainbow pattern that means the glass is touching or is too close and uh you need to swap the locations of the glass so the front goes to the back the back goes to the front um and you know i can kind of illustrate that here so like say you want it say this top one is the front this bottom one is the is the back and these are the windshields um, if this one is shaped like that and this is you know obviously very uh, exaggerated uh, it's gonna hit in the center before you know it hit the sides get where we need them to be but if you take this back one and put it on the front we're good the sides get where they, they need to be um, and there's no interference so that's what we're testing for um, also, from this point forward, all the way to the end, what you want to do is when you set the glass in these racks, um, you want them centered left to right, and you also want them sitting as naturally vertical as possible. So you don't want them leaning against the two bars here, or the, the bar on each side, uh, the poles. You don't want it leaning against that too hard because it'll deform the glass, the curvature, and we want to keep that curvature as much as possible, um, or else it won't fit on the vehicle. 
Um, so it should barely be leaning on those poles, like barely. You should be able to almost like flick it forward and it like fall forward onto these poles. So we're gonna do that, you know, through the whole process. Uh, we're making the jig here. So what this is is you're gonna get the you're gonna measure the glass that's on the vehicle already. And you're gonna take a two by four that goes all the way across and is as wide as the top or the middle of the glass is. And you are going to uh, make these little like standoffs that are screwed to the edges of the two by four and press into the outer left and right of the glass. And those three points, those three contact points are going to give you your curve. And then we're going to make that as a jig and then we're going to transfer that jig onto our glass that we're making on the rack. It'll make sense. But what that does is it keeps, it makes sure that we have the curve that the vehicle has and needs. Because you could get a piece of glass and it could not be curved uh, to the shape of the vehicle as it sits. And if you laminate that with another piece of glass with epoxy, it's keeping that shape. It's not gonna form to the vehicle like a normal one layer one windshield or single windshield would. <clears throat> so it's very important that you make this jig and make it correctly. Get a friend um, and then whatever, wherever you make it on the vehicle, say you make it at the top, it needs to go sit on the top in, uh, on the rack. Um, and then if you measure it and make it, you know, in the middle, it needs to go sit in the middle on the rack of the, of your windshields that you're making. So, uh, we'll fast forward this. Rewind a little bit. So yeah, this is, uh, I made these little like notches, see there, for the glass to like kind of sit in between them. I, I, I wasn't a fan of it, I just took them off. But see how it's pressing into that? Pressing there, it's clamped on. I swapped to a, a lighter clamp later. It's level. Um, and then it's, it's hitting there too. Make, you want to make sure that it's good left to right and it's level so it's not like wonky. That's a picture. And then this was a bottom jig that I made. It didn't pan out. I was trying to make the top and the bottom jigs one jig that pressed all four at once and it didn't work. <coughs> so I scrapped that, but I turned it into something. I repurposed a little bit. Uh, I turned it into something that uh, props the top jig up so I don't have to worry about it falling. And you'll see how that works. I'm gonna skip through this. Oh, whoop, not all of that. All right, so see how it sits, you know, around those poles, keeps it propped up. Uh, also these pool noodles here, my mic's still working, yep. Pool noodles here, um, If you, when you have a rack like this, put those pool noodles on and like, you know, tape them up or something. I didn't tape them up because I'm an idiot, but this black, you know, these black bars here, that's like rubber, but it's still the surface area, like that top point is too small. So whenever you take a fully loaded windshield that has epoxy in it and it's cured and you set it on there to like, you know, clean it and stuff and you know, flip around. If you set it on this bare rack, odds are it's gonna crack the edge of that glass because uh, it's so much weight on one fine point. So these pool noodle, these pool noodles that I noodles hard word to say uh spread that load out i don't know what i'm doing here let's see uh so i got figured out you know which one goes where which windshield front and back and then uh gonna clean it up spray away first and then i think i'll probably do like isopropyl alcohol um i might do like acetone or denatured alcohol to get like the writing off. Uh, they like to write on these whenever you get them. Uh, so I'll use that to get it off. Make sure there's no streaks left by any of your solvents. Uh, also, I forgot to mention for your microfibers, uh, put them like before you even like use them, uh, like fresh out of the box, put them in uh, the laundry. Uh, no soap, put them through the wash, put them through the dryer. Uh, cold water and then low temp uh, dryer. Uh, that'll just get all the lint off of them. It, they may say that they're lint-free. They're not. Um, they're lying. So doing that gets all the lint off of them, or most of it, that we're worried about. 
Okay, so here I'm doing the primer. Um, so this primer, it will etch into the glass. It's the whole purpose of it. Um, it's getting put onto the front of the glass, which is not its purpose. It's not meant for this, but it works great for what we want to do. Um, it's normally, it, it goes on the back is where it goes. Uh, or actually, no, the black stuff goes on the windshield frames, like where it mounts to. And I think the clear stuff is it's the primer that goes on the back if you're using a, a primer required urethane, which we do not. Um, ours is primerless that we're going to use. But this works great for for creating a surface for the urethane to bond to. If you just take urethane and then squeeze a bead out straight onto this bare glass, it's not going to stick. You need to have this primer on there first to give a surface that the urethane will bite into. And uh, we're going to like, we're going to like, I don't know, say this is the dauber right here, the wool dauber. We're going to uh, grip it with our thumb, I think, and I, and index finger here. And I think I like glide along the edge of the glass with my index finger. Um, so the dauber sits on the top and I don't risk like slipping and then, you know, getting into the, the viewable area of the glass of the primer. <clears throat> so go all the way around. I try and do one swoop. It's not possible to do it in one suit because you gotta, you know, get more. But I don't like to do this. I do one drag as long as I can. Um, and those daubers, those wool daubers, they, they kind of got a lot of fuzzies on them. I haven't really found any that I liked. Um, <clears throat> some people use, like, I've seen some, like, foam applicators and stuff, but I've heard like break down and stuff like the foam like mid use they're like breaking down as you use it um so i've never really even gave that a shot that just sounded not good to me uh so i use the wool but the only downside with the wool is like they kind of got a lot of fuzzies on them so kind of kind of do this with the dauber and you know get as many as you realistically can off but don't go overboard because you'll just end up picking the whole thing apart um but get most of it you know the big fuzzies off Again, we're sitting that glass in there, natural, like a natural vertical state. It needs to not be leaning too much against those poles. It needs to be centered left to right. <coughs> and we're going to clean the inside and outside faces of, uh, of both glass. Uh, you may think, why do we need to do the outside faces? It should only be the inside that matters. And yeah, you're right. Um, but I don't like, like I want to look at it and I don't want to see a smudge, like at all, because <laughs> it freaks me out, because um, it could be inside the glass. So I just take care of all the smudges. Um, and right here, you see me getting the suction cups. I clean those vigorously with isopropyl alcohol. Uh, I use a lot because that it like I don't know what it is either it either soaks it up or like the rubber soaks it up or it, it just evaporates that quick I think it just evaporates that quick but use a lot um, that way you can really get all the dust off and stuff because um, you do not want to be lifting this windshield that has urethane on it and then you're like almost where you need to be on the back windshield and then a cup pops off and then now you're smearing urethane all over the glass and then possibly breaking glass because you know it's hitting it as it drops uh you never know so i like to make sure that those are snug and where they want to be do some dry runs lift it up you know see like if you know putting it higher is better for you or lower or wider or you know, skinnier you know do some dry runs see where you like that center of gravity at because you need to think about you know, slowly with with urethane on it, uh, like maybe like 10 more pounds or not 10 more pounds, uh, a couple more pounds of urethane on it, uh, and then lifting it and then gently sliding it through those poles in between the glass and the poles without smearing urethane onto the back glass. Um, it's a very gentle process. So you need to make sure that you are comfortable for that and then make sure that your work area, like do some dry runs with that and make sure that you can do that, you know, reliably, do it a few times. Uh, make sure you're not tripping over anything. 
Make sure nothing's in the way. <clears throat> and then you're going to do uh, a couple more cleanings. And then make sure you're swapping gloves. Like if you look at your gloves and they've got smudges on them from whatever, um, swap them out. Like get like a 50 or 100 pack of gloves. You're probably going to burn through all of them. Uh, so at least I do. Um, now we're, okay, hang on. I need to pause that and rewind. So for the urethane bead that we're gonna lay down here, this is going on the back face of the front glass. Back face of the front glass. Um, so this, the urethane that you're gonna order comes with these tips and the tips come completely sealed and the dimensions that the cut needs to be for the tip, it needs to be uh, two times the spacing that we're going to use for the diameter of that circle. Um, and then there's going to be a triangle that you're going to cut uh, as well. And that triangle from the edges of the left and right edges of the circle to the point uh, is also a quarter inch. Uh, and I can't really show it very well here. There. So that black line, that's the that's one of the lines I drew for my cuts. So you make this with a razor. So this inside diameter needs to be quarter inch. And then from this edge to this point needs to also be a quarter inch um, since we're using eighth inch spacing. And then this welding rod here uh, is tied and glued to that as a guide. I know all the windshield guys are probably laughing at me right now that do it for a living. Uh, I suck at laying beads on glass like this. Uh, so I make it work for, you know, the way I need it to. Uh, that rides along the edge of the glass. It's totally safe and makes a nice uniform bead to me. Um, and it works well. So... Uh, see me use that uh, do some dry runs around it make sure that you're comfortable in that position because it needs to be the gun angle needs to be straight perpendicular with the glass both ways so this way and this way you need to be straight down on that glass and it's weird because the glass curves obviously so like you need to like follow the curve you know what I'm saying um, keep that pre that tip pressed down um, and then the the triangle facing the right way so that it creates a nice triangular bead <clears throat> and you can adjust the the speed setting on the gun too um, and it takes a while for it to kick in like you're gonna pull the trigger and it's just gonna it's just gonna make noise for like 10 seconds before it actually like engages and starts plunging as it needs to um, this particular gun, I don't know why it does that. It just takes forever for it to kick in. So, like, the moment you let off that trigger, it's got to do it again. Um, it, like, goes, like, an inch back, like the plunger. Every time you let off, I don't know why. Um, but, yeah, you're going to start at the left side of the left hole that we're going to leave. You're going to go all the way around the glass. And you're going to end at the right edge of the right hole. So, you're going to go all the way around stop here and you're going to leave a gap here and you're going to leave a gap here and then you're going to do another bead at the top in between those those gaps and those gaps are going to be a few inches so in a final check for smudges dust look under it look up at the light have bright lights above you check for any lint um, dust smudges uh, do that for both of them before you set them up Yeah, I stopped there, and then we're had a gap, and then we're keep going. And we're gonna stop. Yep. And I'm going around checking the bead, making sure it's nice. Uh, I had like a hiccup over here. Uh, I think the plastic curtains to behind me got in the way. I had to like readjust or something, but just use a. Uh, it's working. Yep. Use a razor and just kind of like massage the peak of the bead and you know just kind of make it a triangle yourself um, do that for any start stops as well if you have to start stop do that um, try not to but 
if you do have a start stop, um, make sure you use a razor or a stick or whatever or a butter knife to blend your start stops together to make it look like a continuous bead. <coughs> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. I had to do this twice. <coughs> Okay, so, saw me slide it down there. Cups are on there ready to go uh, in the comfy position that I like. And see how I angle that, you know, create some more room for myself. Um, be sure not to like push down into these uh, pool noodles here and like mess this bottom bead up here careful with that make sure you're always pulling up in a way as you lift this up and then you're gonna like keep it's gonna be really easy for you to do this with a windshield like have it you know sloped you need to make sure that that sucker is completely vertical and and you know because if you have it leaned back like that as you slide it in these bottom corners here are going to contact the back glass and that is bad because <laughs> uh, you're going to be smearing your thing everywhere um, so make sure it's completely vertical and that you're pretty much like dragging against these front poles all the way down and then once it's all the way down and the uh, the edge the bottom edge of the front glass is on uh, the bottom here then you can press it forward and whenever you like are about to press it forward, make sure that it's lined up left to right. You don't want to like press it in and then find out it's like an inch off, because um, then you're fucked. You you want to like stand your eye, like keep your eyes right in front of the um, a good point of reference is the rear view mirror button, like the the black outline for that that button goes. And you want to line those black outlines up with each other. That's a good reference. Um, for like centering it left to right. <clears throat> yeah, these they kind of overlay right there. And uh, so take those off. And we're going to squeeze around, massage it, uh, squeeze it in, go around a few times. Uh, make sure that the gap is an eighth inch or so. Uh, you want to use. Actually, you make it exactly an eighth inch. Uh, so I use a welding rod, an eighth inch welding rod, uh, like for TIG welding, like a couple inches long. I just use that as like a feeler gauge or like a spacer all the way around. And if it's if the glasses are too tight or too close together, you can use like a chisel or like a flathead screwdriver. It sounds barbaric, but it works. It's fine. It's not going to hurt it uh, as long as you're not an idiot. And just twist it gently to pry them apart. And... Uh, That'll work, and then you can, you know, put the welding rod back in and squeeze it back together. Uh, squeeze it onto the welding rod while it's in there, and then pull it out. And don't stick the welding rod like all the way through the urethane bead, um, because the urethane bead is gonna come like right up to the very edge of the glass, or it should if you did it right. Um, or it should even be squeezing past it. So you might have to stick the welding rod like into the urethane bead just a little bit, which is fine, but don't go all the way through it. Uh, just do enough to get. In between the glass, that's all you need. Going around, okay, and then we're sealing the top gaps here with painter's tape. Not 100% sealing, just mostly. Uh, these little teeny ends here, those are not pressed down. Uh, that's gonna let air still get in to the glass. That way, the urethane bead that we laid can cure inside and out. Um, I don't know how the urethane would cure if that was completely sealed, but I, I do know that urethane cures by air, um, so it needs fresh air. And these are just to keep dust from getting in between the glass, but you still want to leave some, some breathability for some air to get in there. Doing the last little cleanup. Um, doesn't really matter, but I just like it to look good. That way I'm not second guessing myself the whole time. Um, and then you're going around with, I think, denatured alcohol, it looks like right here. Um, and the rag meant for denatured alcohol. So like whenever you have your solvents, your different ones, like acetone, 
endangered and then isopropyl and then spray away they need to have their own dedicated rags you don't mix match these it's a bad idea um because some solvents leave streaks but they're really good at like cleaning up urethane like they'll clean up urethane great but they, they will leave streaks um and then some solvents are a little bit less good at cleaning certain things but they leave no streaks so you don't want to like cross contaminate your solvents um or your chemicals, or whatever. Sorry, next certain. <clears throat> so uh, here's that jig that we made. We're gonna clamp that on in the center, but we're not gonna clamp it too hard because if you clamp it too hard, you're just gonna squeeze the glass together. It's only there to gently press the two by four against the glass. That's it. Um, and uh, if you if you have glass where it's too curved and it's not touching um, the outer legs here, just make clamps, or not make clamps, get clamps that uh, suck the glass in like that. Hang on, let's see if I can. So make a clamp that goes from this edge to the back edge and just brings the glass in. Um, probably could put like a some TIG rod in there as a spacer just to keep it from getting smushed um, that's probably what I would do but I would put it in there like long ways not just like stab it in there because that's a lot of uh, it's a lot of pressure on one little point so if you could put it in there kind of long ways just enough to get in between the glass and then let you take it out later um, that'll let you stuck the glass to the jig that it, and have the shape that it needs to have. So again, just clamping that just enough. Okay, so here we're going to do the injection. We're taking the jig off for the injection because we got to get to an area that that jig covered up, which is down below. <clears throat> Mic still works, okay. This is the hardener I was showing, the, the resin. Uh, you can use slow. I like to use fast normally for this injection. But uh, I didn't have any on hand, and I didn't feel like wasting the money on it. And there wasn't a time crunch, so I just used the slow. Either works. Um, but the, the fast cures in a day, the slow cures in about three days to the touch, like it, like a fingernail won't dent it. <clears throat> um, and then you're going to mix 150 milliliters uh, total. So you're going to have 100 milliliters of resin and then 50 milliliters of hardener uh, for 150 total. And then you're going to fill up three of these. Uh, each one is 30 milliliters. Um, at least three. Uh, you could do more if you want, but I don't really see a need. Uh, honestly, I don't even think there's a need to even inject anymore it's just I've, I've been so traumatized that i just do it anyways it just says like an extra barrier <clears throat> for like any mishaps to happen or from keeping any mishaps to happen so um yeah i do the injection and with these uh needles they're like a little more than an eighth inch thick and our spacing is an eighth inch so that's a problem because if you try to squeeze those in between the glass, you're gonna put pressure on the glass and you're probably gonna crack them. Um, so what I like to do is I like to use vice grips and squeeze the, the needles, like the first inch or inch and a half of them um, and flatten them out. And you gotta make sure that that flattened part goes up into the glass um, on that axis. You don't want to put it in like this. Like if the glass is going this way, do not want to put the, the flattened part looking like this because it's going to still press into the glass. Um, and you need to make sure that the hole is on the one of the edges, on one of the flattened edges. Not the flattened face, but the edge. That way, when it's in the glass, so remember the glass is going this way, the epoxy is coming out. And it's going left or right. It's not going um, against the face of the glass, uh, which it wouldn't be able to anyways because you would be breaking the glass if you try to put it in that way. 
But um, yeah, I'll show you. I explain here. Yeah, you can see me. See how the the hole is in between the jaws of the vice grips. It's not like covered by one of the jaws of the vice grips. And then I just kind of gently squeeze it just enough to where I know it's gonna fit in between the glass. I do that for all three, and then I'll uh, I'll mix and then I'll uh, uh, suck them up full of resin. And I like to for these like little one quart containers, their lowest um, what's the word denomination? I, I don't know the word. Uh, the lowest number is 50. So what I like to do is I like to use the hardener first for my 50 milliliters, bring it up to the 50, and then I'll use the resin to bring it up to the 150. So you have your 100 and then your 50, two part mix, or two to one mix. <clears throat> Mixing it up with a butter knife, scrape all the edges, the bottom, Make sure you get every square frickin' milli millimeter, like everything. Um, and then like, take the knife and then scrape it up off the top and so the resin off the knife drips back in and then rinse and repeat. You don't want any unmixed resin anywhere in your windshield. Pull the, pull the resin and you see these blocks here. These blocks are here for this reason, to create space in between the floor and the bottom of the windshield. Because when these uh, needles are fully extended, they're like freaking this long. And so I even had to like get in at an angle because the floor, uh, there was not enough clearance, but I did not feel comfortable bringing up any higher than this, um, the rack. So I just go in at an angle do three of them and they need to go um in the very like at the lowest point of the windshield so like i've seen some cars that have like the lowest point over here they like it like swoops down for some reason and then it like goes up so like if you had a vehicle like that you'd want to put them at the lowest point right here all in one spot like like an inch apart see um so in this case it's the middle of the windshield which it isn't for most vehicles it is um, and then you only want to fill it up quick enough to where, like, when you inject, it doesn't just immediately full out to the sides. It, like, piles up high at, before it flows out. So, like, you don't want to do it too quick because the resin can come up past this black part as it, like, piles up from putting it in too quick. And it'll come into the viewable area and it'll leave, like, a film in that viewable area which you'll then see later after you fill it up they'll like you'll see like a little like a wavy shimmery spot right here so you can like look down in between like the glass you can look down you can like squeeze it and you can tell like where you're at in relation to the top of the black um black area and you can just throttle how quick you fill it up um see so yeah, i just don't go too quick just take your time um Make sure whenever you poke through the urethane that you're poking through the dead center of it, not like off to the little like off to the side or off to this side, dead center. Make sure that you're on the correct axis, because remember that that needle is flattened out, so you don't want to, you know, separate the glass, break it. Now we're doing injecting. I think this is uh, okay. That's very important. I'll show that. So you see, see me messing with like uh, the needles, like how far in they're, uh, they're sticking. And I'll like pull it out a little bit. Once they're all fully uh, injected. That's so like, yeah. That's so um, they're there to plug the holes that you poked. But the needles aren't so far in that once the epoxy cures, they're stuck there. It still lets you pull them out. And what I like to do is you kind of have to babysit, um, which is why I like using the, another reason why I like using the fast hardener here is because it's less babysitting time. So look at your mixing cup that you used and poke it every now and then. And whenever you can like barely dent it 
with a fingernail or like a knife or something that's about when you want to pull these out um, after it's like gelled up uh, because these need to plug the holes until it gels up or else it's just going to leak out um, but again you don't want to be too late and then these get solidified into the windshield um, so I always keep them just enough in there to plug the urethane but not you know enough to they're gonna fall out either it off let's see uh yeah i know what we're gonna do so we're gonna take it off or take it off the rack put it on this and then we're going to um put the primer on we're gonna clean up the first urethane bead uh, that we did because some of it oozes out and so we're going to clean that uh, make sure none of the urethane bead is sticking out past the edges of the, of the glass uh, that way when we do our do our beauty bead later our beauty bead looks good there's no like humps in it or anything um, and I like to do about like a 45 degree angle on the razor like this not a uh, not straight up and down whenever I uh, well, except that, because I'm trying to get the epoxy that cured. Some of it dripped, and uh, I'm trying to get that like flattened out. That's the only time that you would want to do it flat. But the rest of the time, if you're like trimming urethane, you want to do it like a 45 degree angle, because the edge of that glass is like rounded. You know what I'm saying it's it's rounded. It's not like completely square. So uh, a 45 degree angle works pretty well. You're gonna be um, you're gonna be ripping through razor blades because they're gonna dull like crazy because you're just like grinding them against glass. So um, yeah, I get a big pack of razors. All the way around. You see me changing gloves? Like like I said, go through a lot of gloves. Like anytime you see something on it, like a smudge, get new gloves. Uh, you don't want to track that around on glass bad time painters tape going on uh, we're overhanging just a little bit and then we're smushing with the roll onto the edge of the glass to make like a nice crease we're looking for that crease because it it lets me know that that edge is like sealed and that edge being sealed is very important because we're about to do a uh, primer urethane primer and you don't want that like leaking under or leaching under the uh, tape now we're trimming the uh, tape up to the edge of the glass and then we're gonna do the urethane and we might like beef up the corners like over here with some more tape um, just to be safe maybe down here I don't remember maybe over here too wherever you know you don't have like at least a inch or so you want to put some more tape <laughs> test all right we're good i'm like freaking out about my mic dying because i just did a whole run through and like died 15 minutes into it into a two-hour video didn't realize it till it was done <laughs> but anyways uh we're gonna do the uh front face now same deal fast forward this um all right so we're gonna do the urethane on the outer edge like we're gonna try and like smush it in between the glass the two glasses uh, and like cover the urethane bead all the way around and that makes the beauty bead of urethane that we lay in there uh, adhere really nicely to the glass and seal it up even more so it's another barrier of epoxy protection uh, for any leaks <clears throat> also don't be an idiot like i did um and like just have that thing extending out a few inches the dinky little wool dauber like do what i did in the beginning and have it like close to your thumb like on your thumb pretty much and use like an another finger as a guide that glides along the glass to like give you support because i mess up over here and i like ding it on the glass 
And if you ding it on the glass, you need to act really fast and hit it with some acetone or denatured alcohol or something because it's going to start etching in, in, into that glass very fast. Yeah, see how I'm like not using a finger as a guide? I'm just like <laughs> freehanding it. Yeah, and then I, I slip right here. And uh, I got to be quick. Got it. We were good. Get more gloves because I got some primer on it on my old ones. And I, I, um, I don't know if this is like, I don't know if there's anything to it, but I put the, I do the primer, um, with the windshield that way facing that way for a reason uh my thought process is that like if i'm too heavy-handed with the primer it's just gonna run off to the sides whereas like if it's flip the other way and it's going like this if i'm heavy-handed with the primer it'll like run down to the middle and then possibly pull up and then maybe you know start going different directions i don't know i, I just try and overthink a lot of this because i've been very traumatized as i said <clears throat> And then um, we're using a different tip here for this beauty bead. Um, it's just a small, like, eighth-inch diameter flat hole. That's it. No, like, triangle or anything. And we're just sticking it straight in, to the, in between the glass. And we're going all the way around. And just a really thin, quick bead. And then we're going to flatten it out with um, Bondo spreaders or credit card or whatever you want to use. And you want to... You want to squeegee that a few times, and then you want to take the excess and you know plop it onto something that you got in your hand. For me, it was another Bondo spreader, so I was just scraping off onto that. Because um, you don't want to be smearing this crap all the way around <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> yep, here's the Bondoing. You see that? Oh. Just doing that beauty bead. Another layer of protection always helps. Peeling the tape up, leaving the uh, gaps sealed ish. Let this cure for about a day, uh, this beauty bead. I let the urethane bead cure for about a day, the, the initial one, and then this one cure for about a day. Um, and when the urethane is curing the initial bead that we that we used to stick them together, I have it sitting in that rack vertically for a day before I even touch it or move it. Um, and then this bead here, I'll let it sit here on this rack, you know, sitting like this for a day. It's fine. See that uh, this pool noodle is coming, coming in handy right here. Now that this glass is stuck together, it's a lot more weight. So, yeah. See, there was like a lot of force right here. These pool noodles help a lot. Make sure you're always on them. Don't, you know, accidentally go past. Like maybe just cover the whole freaking thing if you can. <clears throat> I'm just going to peel the tape up. And then we're going to clean the edges with a razor. See here? 45 degree angle with the razor. All the way around. Go a few times. Hit the top and bottom windshield with it. Makes it look really good. And then, you know, hit any high spots or any frilly things, any fingery, frilly things sticking up that you might have uh, not flattened out or missed with the spreader. Just uh, run over those with a razor. I like to, like, pull it. I'll do this. So, like, on the flat spots. Fast forward a little bit. Put that back in the rack. Remember, uh, as naturally vertical as possible. Also, keep in mind, uh, or take note. All right. So now you see these things here. This is two pool noodles cut up in half with a quarter inch of wood below them. Uh, they're glued to it, and then... 
gorilla taped around the rack and over the pool noodles on both sides. So now that we're about to fill this up with epoxy, it's going to get really heavy. Um, and that's just this is just here to spread that weight out so you don't accidentally crack the glass from the weight. Uh, I've done that. <clears throat> You don't want those there like you might think oh i could just keep those there whenever i smush the glass together with the urethane uh no it's a bad time uh because those are super in the way so like it makes um making sure your gap in these areas is correct very hard and they kind of like hang the glass up like the glass will get hung up on this it'll like drag so like you're pinching everything else around it together and like these will not get pinched together. Um, so I like to have these out of the way right up until this point. See, I'm finagling it, making sure it's sitting natural and that the poles are hitting the glass, the face of the glass, at the same time. Not one pole before the other, at the same time. Now I'm getting the thermometer out. That's going to get right on the front of the glass here. Um, putting the jig back on, going to clamp that on. <laughs> Making sure it's centered left to right. Make sure the glass is centered left to right. Um, clamp that. Make sure we're good. Triple check. Getting the resin out. Making the dams here. Uh, gorilla tape. Overlap the glass about a quarter inch on the front and back. And then angle the front and back gorilla tape flaps like that front and backs here and uh, connect them with these side ones here and that'll hold the the shape all the way around and then you're gonna use a hot glue gun to get into the inside uh, nook and cranny and the outside inside outside and like be liberal with that uh, with that glue um, also these dams need to extend about like an inch or two past the ends of your gaps because you don't want to fill the, uh, you know, you don't want to fill that in, and then you know some hot glue gets down in between your glass. That's a bad time. <clears throat> so um, I like to extend the dams out for that reason. I don't think I showed it, but yeah, you want to hit this outside edge here too with the hot glue. And I put that tape on there. Just to keep it uh, closed up while I while I'm working on everything else. And that gap right here is way too big. I should have done. I should have ended it like right there. Um, but yeah, just go a little bit past the ends of it, front and back, and then you want a really you want a really nice crease right here on your, on your tape. You don't want any resin in between the glass and the tape. You don't want any leaks. Dam, there's the sides going on. Make it nice and, you know, not like totally, because then you're going to have resin spilling over, but, you know, just a, just enough to get some good volume in there. And you want that volume for a reason. We'll cover that later. Get the thermometer taped to the center of the glass. <clears throat> this is the uh, feed container, so... We're going to mix our resin in a separate container, and then we're going to pour it into this one. Uh, this one has a hole drilled in the bottom, um, smaller than what we need, and we're going to, like, smush the T-fitting through it, and then it should, like, tightly fit around the T-fitting. The and the T-fitting has barbs on it, so it shouldn't fall out because there's barbs on it that will keep it in. Um, and then you might have to, like, heat form this tube over this uh, T-fitting. Um, unless you find like the correct TV to use. This is all I could get my hands on um, at the time. And then um, this is the half inch inner diameter vinyl tubing. You can get like these in 10 foot rolls or something. Um, you need to use half inch, don't use anything less. Um, and then clamp shut with whatever clamps you can get that will clamp them shut. Um, they need to be clamped 100% shut. Uh, reasons you'll see but um, you don't need to seal this up with anything I tried e6000 on the backside you can see that 
um, I think on the inside too. It, I think I peeled it up afterwards. I realized that like the seal was good enough, and if this leaks a little bit, like a few drops, it's not a big deal because it's not holding it for very long um, for, throughout the pour. <clears throat> But um, clean everything with isopropyl alcohol with a fresh rag, microfiber, I mean. Um, your container, your drill mixer, like clean everything on your drill mixer, clean the shaft of the drill mixer, clean your drill. Um, swap clothes if you have to. I like to go shirtless sometimes. Just like anything that can like hold dust or shake dust off or like you know, and drop it into your mix, you know, deal with it. Um, get it taken care of. And make sure that your vacuum chamber works. You should be able to, like, lift up on the top of it and shake it and it not, like, drop. Um, get familiar with the valves and how they work and what they do. And which ones to use to let air in and stuff. Um, make sure your pump works, doesn't have any leaks, and then find where you need to measure, like where your measuring container needs to be, because my floor isn't level, like that's a, uh, there's like joists right here, and like the floor's bowed in, um, so I needed to have like <laughs> in a specific spot to where it was level. Um, yep, and then just fill it up, uh, two to one ratio for this, uh, two gallons, um, so for finding out how much you need to pour or mix for the pour, uh, I've got 1728 brains, so I don't know the gallon uh, measurement or formula, but you just do average of the two top and bottom widths. So average is out, that's your width. And then multiply that by your uh, spacing and then multiply by your height, your center height. Um, and divide all that by 1728, convert to gallons. I, I just Googled the conversion. Uh, this is probably a way simpler formula, but I've got box designer brain. So, um, and then whatever gallons you get, multiply that by one and a half, and that's going to account for any bowing that occurs. Whenever you fill the glass up, the weight of the epoxy is gonna push out on the glass like this, and that is in turn going to create more volume that needs to be filled up by more epoxy. And that's a negative feedback loop, uh, which can spiral into a very bad situation. Uh, so it needs to be, need to be looking out for some things, which I'll point out later. Um, so for this ended up being like two gallons that I needed. Uh, this is a very big windshield. Most will need like a gallon and a half or a gallon and a quarter. But we're using the slow hardener here. You need to use slow hardener. Fast hardener is a bad time. Um, and we're going to mix the shit out of this. You need to mix this for like an uncomfortable amount of time. Uh, with your drill mixer, you need to scrape the bottom, start from the outside, and work your way in to the center. And then you need to... Uh, for the sides, you need to start at the bottom and then work your way all the way around, working your way up. And uh, just rinse and repeat, do that over and over and over. <clears throat> Ideally, what you would do is get another container that has nothing in it. And after you do your mix, you pour the mixed container into the new container. That way any unmixed um, stuff on the sides, that's stuck to the sides, doesn't get into your pour. Um, but I'm good enough with making sure that I get everything mixed that I don't do that. But if that's another st another step that you can take um, if you wanted. Um, and then that goes into the vacuum chamber. And you just vacuum the shit out of it. Uh, you might have to rinse and repeat this process a few times. Uh, the bubbles would get all the way to the top. And then you need to stop the pump and let air in slowly. Slowly. Like you need, you'll, you do it just enough to where you see the bubbles like indent below the inlet. Um, you, if you do it too quick, you're splashing epoxy everywhere. Um, so I had a problem with this pump. It wasn't like, it's a shitty Harbor Freight one. It's not strong. It wasn't ripping the bubbles to the top like nearly as fast as I needed it to. 
So I realized that, and then I swapped to a pump that I know is good. Um, I don't know why I was trying to give this one a shot. I don't, I don't remember. I think I thought it was, my old one was broken. I forgot it wasn't. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I was like, what is going on? Uh, and I stopped it, uh, and then you use your torch here to flame off the top of the bubbles, like that. And that's about all you do. Don't try and get all the bubbles, because you're going to overheat the epoxy. You're going to cause... Um, certain parts of the epoxy to cure quicker than other parts and you're gonna have weird convection currents that you're gonna see later on in the cure that cause weird shimmering and waves so don't overuse the torch um just quick flames um and here's i'm here i'm quicking i'm hooking up the actual good pump and you'll see that it rips the bubbles up a lot faster and rinse and repeat and you'll see the bubbles get bigger and bigger and bigger. That means you're, you're getting there. You're getting, you know, where you need to be. And then they'll just kind of, they'll get really small at the end. Like that. It'll kind of dissipate. And then you'll get a little bit coming up from the very bottom. And it's just not going to stop. Like, you could sit there forever. And it's just not going to stop. And the reason why is because the epoxy is boiling. Um... So you need to kind of find the point where, like, you're like, okay, I got all the air out. Um, it's probably just boiling now. Um, and then, you know, you call it good. Let the air back in, stop the pump, and uh, flame it real quick. And call it good, and then put it into your pour container. And maybe have a friend for this. Um, I try to do it myself. And it's, you kind of got to think about it like pouring a beer. Like in a glass, you know how they always like angle it a little bit and to, you know, keep it from foaming up. Um, it's kind of the thought process here. Um, the smoother that you can make this pour into that container, the better. Uh, and then this, like from the weight of the epoxy going into it, it, like straightened out, and then it was just like straight into it. It was just not good. Um, but thankfully, it wasn't much of an issue. You'll see, I even like drip a little bit because it just like <laughs> get uh, it changed things up on me too quick. I know the bubbles look bad, but when you got like the temperature like 80, 80 degrees, bubbles rise up to the top really fast. Or I guess it's like 76 here. Um, not as hot as I would like, as I would like. I think I ran into some heating issues. Um, 80 degrees about where I like it is ideal. Um, I think my AC unit topped out at like 81. I think that was the reason. If you can get an AC unit that will, uh, the heat can go up higher, definitely go for that. But yeah, I think I topped out at like 76, uh, which isn't you know 100% ideal, but it's it makes the the resin thinner for the pour. I'm gonna stop here because I got a little bit more to explain. But you want it 80 degrees for the mix and for the pour. As soon as it's done pouring, you want to drop the AC, the actual AC, like the temperature here, the actual reading. You want to drop that to like 71, 72. You may need to set it to a different number on your AC unit. Um, and you also want to make sure before you would even do your pour or anything, um, I should have mentioned this earlier, you need to test. You need to uh, stress test your AC unit. You need to test your fan layout and you need to do all that as the room is going to be during the pour so like the windshield needs to be where it is like everything needs to be where it is um where it will be during the pour because all of this changes the dynamics of how the room is going to cool and flow air around so like i spent a few days testing like box fan layouts and like where they're blowing and stuff and like where the vent of the AC was blowing and a whole bunch of stuff because I was running an issue into an issue you could see there's like a, a high and a low on this the high and the low delta was getting like 13 degrees which is way too much that's way too high of a delta um that's like when the AC would kick on versus kick off kick on kick off and so um I got that delta down to like a few degrees at one point. It was pretty pretty good, um, and you just need to do figure all that out um, before you do your pour. Um, and remember, 
the temperature on the center of the glass is what matters, not on the AC unit. And um, we're, gra we're gravity feeding here. So that container that we poured our, our vacuum to mix into is now up top above the windshield by about a foot. Um, and we've got the hoses gorilla taped to our dams. Uh, and it wasn't great. Um, you might need to like pay attention to it um, or just hold it there for the pour. It's kind of tough when you're one person. But also I was dealing with this kink here in this hose. Um, I had to like put a clamp on that to keep that open, to keep the hose open. Um, let's see. It was like falling and stuff. I was like struggling trying to get these to you know stay where they needed to. <laughs> but I ended up getting it figured out. But just pay attention to that. Um, you want it to be like a nice slope like this one is all the way down. This one's kind of like it goes down and then up. It causes an air bubble right there. You can see it. And then it goes down. You don't want any air bubbles in your lines, ideally. And then as this is filling up, you wanna you see you see the level up here on this bucket, the level's dropping, uh, which means that the level down here on the glass should be rising. If there's any point where the level on your bucket is dropping and then the level on your glass is not rising, that is a bad sign. That means that your glass is bowing apart, creating more volume that needs to be filled with resin. So the vault, so the line isn't rising. It's just creating more space that needs filled. Uh, and eventually that will get to a point. It's a negative feedback loop. It'll get to a point where the glass is so stressed and so spread apart from the weight that it's just gonna crack it. Um, so to work around that, normally like some big body pillows on the front in between these poles and the glass. Um, Sometimes you might have to get a stream and put one on the backside too and kind of like have to mess with the, you know, the natural state, resting state of the glass. I like to not do that. I like to just put it on the front. Um, but uh, ideally you don't need to use that at all. You could also build a jig around this that like mounts to the floor and, you know, presses into the center, uh, maybe like split into thirds. So like one, uh, two or four here, one here on the front and back um, in the center height wise that presses into it. Not, maybe not press in, but you know, rests against it and keeps it from going out. Uh, you don't want to press in and like put pressure on it you know, before there's even epoxy in it. That would be bad. Uh, just test, all right, mic's good. Okay, so we're filling it up, we're just uh, babysitting. Pressure or the level's rising gets to the top and we're going to start clamping off the hoses um, because you don't want these dams overfilling and then putting epoxy everywhere it's not good so you might have to like slowly open them or slowly close them to get the dams filled up and I like to fill these dams up pretty close to the top um, and the reasoning is that there will be some bowing that occurs um, Maybe not mid pour, but it will gently happen slowly over time as the epoxy cures. And that will cause the level to drop a little bit. It'll drop a few inches, um, which is fine. I just do a top up pour after that. Um, very small mix. You, you might not even need to, to uh, vacuum it. Um, but the dams act as like a backup reservoir so that that level drop isn't as extreme looking now I'm like tilting the the bucket up top to make sure everything gets all the epoxy gets into the t-fitting because it sticks up a little bit out of the bottom like a three to an inch or so quarter inch and I take the hoses off you're gonna get some epoxy that spills on your glass, which is fine when you do this. You just gotta make sure you clean it up. <clears throat> I 
Here I am cleaning with denatured alcohol. It'll probably, honestly, it'll probably smudge the epoxy around, but you want to use a liberal amount of solvent um, and literally like make sure you, that you get everything like go past where the epoxy was and just make sure that the epoxy is like fully drenched in that solvent because then it won't cure which is what we want on the glass on the glass face um that way when you know everything is cured you can pull it off later and then you can put some elbow grease in with some actual like uh clean towels and like you know maybe some acetone to really uh get that up it could be like a week later and that and that, uh, that epoxy will still come up because it's not going to cure because it got messed up by the solvent um and the, this here is a dental vibrator they use these to like make teeth molds and stuff and get all like the air bubbles out of the resin and it works the same way for this uh you jack it up under the windshield press it up into the bottom edge just enough to where it will still work you can push it too hard and it will just like kind of bind up and not vibrate so you need to do just enough pressure to where you know it's putting a lot of vibration into the glass but not too much to where it's just not moving uh, and then mess with uh, the vibration level jack it up as high as it can go comfortably without it like shaking off you know your platform or whatever you got it propped up on <clears throat> you can see the levels here um, level dropped right here a couple inches that's what I was talking about and then we'll do a top up later you do like fast hardener or, or slow whatever you want but um, I also like to uh, like these dams here I don't think I showed it but remember the dams were there and now they're not um, I think I, I didn't have time to record it, but um, the resin that is in your mixing cup or that was up here, the resin that's like left over and like sitting on the sides and stuff, feel it. Um, see how gelled up it is or how hard it is. Like maybe poke it with a stick or something so you don't you know, mess your hands up. Um, and that'll tell you kind of what the state of the resin is inside the glass or you can take a 332 welding rod and stick it down in this gap here um, and feel the very top of this level here and if it feels hard or you know maybe a little teeny bit tacky but not like you know you're disforming it <clears throat> then you can do your top up for and just rebuild the dam um, but I like to get the dams off when uh, it's when the epoxy is soft like that because it's easy to cut through the epoxy um, to get the dams off. Because remember, we use them as reservoirs, so there's they're pretty much covered in epoxy, and you could definitely, you know, wait too long, and then that epoxy will bind the uh, <coughs> the tape pretty much to the glass, and that's a lot of elbow grease, you know, with a razor, and that's not a good time. It's not you know messed up. At that point, it's just it's more work. Um, so that's a good point to take the dams off, and I, I normally just cut them, cut through them with a razor, and then I'll peel the remaining strips of tape off the faces of the glass, and then I'll clean up around it with acetone or uh, denatured alcohol, and then make sure when you do that that you do not get any of that down into that gap, because that gap's going to be exposed. So be careful. Sorry, I might feel myself losing my voice from this. I don't normally talk this much. How long is this video? An hour and ten minutes? Doing good. <coughs> so yeah, make another dam for the top up pour. Got them hot glued. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. It's the top up. Just a little teeny one quart cup. Not a whole lot. About the same as when we did our injections. That's cured. I don't know if I did the the top urethane gap yet, because we will fill those gaps in with urethane later. I don't know if I did that yet. 
Maybe I do that here. See, I'm doing a dry run. Making sure that I can do that. Setting that down on the pool noodles. That sucker's heavy. These are heavy, heavy bastards. Now we're cleaning all the smudges. Isopropyl alcohol first. With fresh rags. Use fresh rags whenever you can when you're at different stages. I think there was like a smudge there of epoxy. I was like, really needed some elbow grease on. I ended up getting it though. There was like a cured little ball of epoxy right there that I missed. It just flicked up though pretty easy. <clears throat> and we'll flip it over and then we'll do the same to the other side. Be careful when you flip these over. I like to go, I like to walk inside of the rack as I flip it. I'm pretty sure. I think that was spray away we did now. Really checking it, look at it from all different angles and different lighting and stuff. These smudges here that we'll get. Smudges up here. Get those. Yeah, there's some real elbow grease down here if I remember correctly. Oh, we were good. <clears throat> yeah, see, I'm looking at it in all different angles. Oh, that was the corner. That's right. Finishing up the sprayway. <laughs> And then uh, I think we're like fixing up any of the little beauty bead imperfections that we missed. I think I did go over the gaps with urethane. I just didn't show it. But you do after the top up pour. Squeegee it and everything with Bondo spreaders. And if like one smudge isn't coming up, just try different solvents, um, acetone or denatured alcohol or isopropyl or spray away. Um, some certain smudges, depending on what they are from, will need certain solvents. <clears throat> and I think that's just the end of it. The matrix looks weird because of the it's two matrixes overlaid. You can see there's like only like the some bowing out near this the edges or not bowing um lensing uh you will get some lensing with these and it depends on the geometry of your specific vehicle um like out near the edges on like on the s10s and stuff it'll happen and like uh i think trailblazers like down here it can happen just a little bit just depends for the most part, it's pretty, pretty nice to look through. And uh, that is it. Um, there will be stuff in the description below of like product links and stuff. Um, and I think that is it. Uh, good luck. Good luck making your windshields. See ya.